Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is definitely with them. She's the soon-to-be congresswoman from New York's 14th district. She's a self-identified democratic socialist. What does that mean exactly? Well, last week, the New York Democratic Socialists of America issued a statement of their beliefs, quote, abolish profit, abolish prisons, abolish cash bail, abolish borders. Abolishing prisons in a country with thousands of murders every year, what would that look like? Well, you probably wouldn't stick around to find out. You'd be long gone, along with every other normal, productive person in what was once America, refugees from your own country. Something like that happened in Venezuela. There are people in our country working to make it happen here. And suddenly, some of them are prominent in the Democratic Party. This is getting scary. If you pay attention, it will scare you. You'd think our so-called intellectual leaders would be working to moderate rhetoric like this and guide it in a more responsible direction, but they're not. Instead, those leaders are adding to the cycle of extremism. Consider the reaction to the retirement of Justice Anthony Kennedy. Left-wing law professors at prominent schools are calling for Democrats to expand the number of seats on the Supreme Court and pack it with liberals for a permanent majority. Harvard Law lecturer Ian Samuel wrote that a Supreme Court with 10 liberals and only five conservatives would actually be, quote, incredibly generous to the Republicans. Fordham Law professor Jed Sugarman agreed with that. If this happened, of course, the court's legitimacy would evaporate overnight, but they don't care. They would have power forever, and that's their goal, their only goal. Of course, Republicans could pack the Supreme Court right now, tonight. They have the power, but everyone knows they won't do that. Only the left is embracing extremism right now. Progressive mobs threaten public figures. Progressive leaders cheer them on. Here's Washington Post writer Jennifer Rubin explaining on MSNBC that Sarah Sanders deserves a, quote, life sentence of harassment from the left for the crime of working for Donald Trump. Watch. Sarah Huckabee has no right to live a life of no fuss, no muss, after lying to the press, after inciting against the press. These people should be made uncomfortable, and I think that's a life sentence, frankly. She has no right to live a normal life because she disagrees with me. Well, there's nothing liberal about language like that. It is pure authoritarianism. In just the past few weeks, the old Democratic Party has vanished. Bill Clinton could not get elected by today's Democratic Party. He can't even appear at Democratic fundraising events or campaign rallies because they might scream at him too. In the coming months, we plan to bring you reporting on what the Democratic Party is fast becoming. Nobody else is going to do that. The other channels want to hide the details. They don't want to scare you before Election Day. But we think you have a right to know what's happening. Tammy Bruce is a radio show host and a frequent guest on the show, and she joins us tonight. Thanks, Tammy, I, uh, if you think of all the kind of famous Democratic figures, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, for example, longtime Democratic senator from New York, Bill Clinton, as I just said, no chance they would be t even taken seriously as candidates now. So dramatically has the party changed. Why is this never noted in public? Well, you know, I think what's interesting is, is that the leadership is so far off from the base itself. Democrats may not even realize how serious this is. I'll give you one example. In a new Harris Harvard poll, when asked whether or not people wanted ICE to be abolished, 78 percent of Republicans said no, 59 percent of Democrats said no, and 75 percent of independents. So six out of every 10 Democrats also said no. The majority also felt that there was not enough border security uh, as well. So they seem to be abandoning their own base. And I think that's because they have uh, really the veneer, just Donald Trump's existence and his success has stripped the veneer off of Democrat leadership. And Republicans are seeing this as well. Republicans have been surprised with the abandonment of repeal and replacing Obamacare. But we've got an establishment that in a way seems to be pretending to understand the the, the, well, the ideologies of the left and the right, but all along have only really been concerned about the machine itself. And now Donald Trump, who's honestly working, has been the one working uh, for real progress on all of the issues, has upset everyone across the, the spectrum, but particularly the left. And, and I think that this is a wake-up call for uh, Democrats and for liberals who have presumed that uh, someone like Dianne Feinstein was serious or that, that may, these other individuals knew what they were talking about and weren't lying to them. Right. And now maybe they need to consider that they have been. 
So I, I, I guess I'm, I can't get past the fact that so much of this is being unreported. So here you have the new Democratic nominee in the 14th Congressional District in New York. And she's in every Sunday show, and she's suddenly the most famous political figure in America. She describes herself as a Democratic Socialist. The Democratic Socialist of New York, her state, just issued a statement saying, no borders, no profit, no prisons. And nobody asks her about that. Do you agree with this? What do you think of this? Right. Are you against borders, profit, and prisons? Like, shouldn't she at least be asked? Shouldn't Democrats be asked to account for that? They never are. Why? Well, and you know, at one point she tried to walk back a little bit. She, in an interview, she noted, I'm not here to push any ideology. Well, why is she running? Is she not running with an agenda? Right. And she says she believes in of something. Course. But it's not being covered in some ways, I think, because it is frightening even to the liberal uh, mouthpieces for the Democratic Party now. No, they either want to think that, right. that she can be controlled, they think. They think that when this young woman gets up there, but what, they do, what, what, what it's a signal of, clearly, is a complete lack of leadership. There is no continuum, no control. And because they're, they're wanting, they've been focusing on hating Donald Trump and they haven't been thinking about policy or who's coming up or how do we uh, totally convince right. people about what's right and what the right policies are. And now at this point, uh, and even Barack Obama, he's coming back, but all the street action you're seeing, the organizing, that's his bailiwick. This is Barack it's Obama. absolutely right. And it's what he's always enjoyed doing. He also has never really wanted to deal with policy. Chuck Schumer must be terrified. He should be terrified. Yeah, Timmy, we thank all you should. very much. Thank you, Tucker. Ricky Jones chairs the Department of Pan-African Studies at the University of Louisville, and he joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. So, no problem, Tucker. Thank as, you for inviting me. As, oh, if, absolutely. It's our pleasure, as always. But as part of, I, I want to lay down markers so we acknowledge that things are changing really fast. So things happen, people make statements that they wouldn't have made even a year ago. And I'm going to refer to a piece that you just wrote last week in the Louisville Courier Journal in Kentucky. Um, in which you described white Americans as moral monsters. Do you want to live in a world where it's okay for university professors to describe groups of people on the basis of their race as moral monsters? Is that the country that you want to live in? Well, I think your framing of the question is, is, is off. I would encourage people to read the piece. It's only an 800 word piece. So it takes I would five, or five to seven minutes. I didn't call white people moral monsters. Actually, that was the conclusion of the legendary writer James Baldwin. I'm sure some of your uh, viewers are familiar with Baldwin. That was his conclusion after many years in America. And I simply posed the question as to whether or not Baldwin were right when we place some of the behavior along lines of race into historical context. So do I want so to So here's, let me, let me quote from the piece. And uh, okay, so I would encourage our, our viewers also, and that's one of the reasons I wanted you to come on, so people would know what is happening out there beyond their own worlds and that people like you right. um, are writing things like this. And I'm quoting, maybe Baldwin was right when he said we are dealing with moral monsters, i.e. white people. How would you feel about a piece that described black people as moral monsters? You would rightly call that racist, wouldn't you? Why is this not the well, same? Well, you're, you're, you're proof texting and, and changing the argument by doing so. Again, I would encourage your, read, your, your viewers to read the entire piece. Um, I think we've entered okay, into how, a how about dangerous this? Is it space. okay well, even to well, suggest, well, is it okay to suggest a group of people on the basis of the race are moral monsters? I mean, do you think that a person's race affects his again, moral standing? One race is better uh, than another? Uh, uh, what do you, tell uh, me what you think. What, what, I, what, I, what I think is very important is if people again read the piece and look at the world in which we live and many of the things that we've seen from the enslavement of people in the country to black codes to the civil war to reconstruction to disproportionate incarceration to a misunderstanding of immigration and that many people in the country outside of the white race certainly have some feelings that are not positive about their treatment right well, now. Well, sure. I don't. And, and on, you're I, whipping I don't, them. Don't you're think... abetting race. No, 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 no you no. hold on. Here's your quote from you. Why are so many white Americans so brutally mean and inhumane? If I wrote the sentence, why are so many black Americans so brutally mean and inhumane, which I would never write, how would you respond well, to that? I, Wouldn't you say I you're think, a racist, as you clearly are? No, no. The, the first thing that I would do is I would read the piece. And I think, unfortunately, as I talked to your producer this afternoon, I mean, 
Being pugnacious with people like you and I, when we don't know one another, certainly, but we're both Americans, it makes for good television, but it doesn't make for look, people understanding perfect, don't, one don't, another. Don't, so I think, don't get, so I look, think the I'm problem quoting your piece. You is, tell me, hold on, is this quote incorrect? And don't, don't no, you're, lay this you're nonsense quoting, on me. Why are so many, you're, you're, no, is, are these your words? I'm tell me what you meant by it. Why are so many you, white I, Americans? I'm being patient Tucker, with I'm you, gonna, but I'm when gonna, you start I'm spinning be, me, I'm be I lose my patience. I'm going to be patient with you. I'm going to be patient with you and let you ask and answer the questions if you'd like to, but we'll run out of time because television is certainly a short platform. Why but again, I encourage people to Why are so many white Americans so... But you've said that five times. Why don't oh, you yes, answer my question, definitely. which is, would it be okay for me to write the sentence, why are black Americans so brutally mean and insensitive? If you would, the, the first, please answer the question. I'm answering the question. The first thing that I would do, would I would not limit myself in a very myopic way to one sentence of a piece, I would endeavor to read the entire piece, which you certainly are intelligent enough to it's do. It's 800 I think words, okay? This yeah, is, yeah. This it, is it, not, not 8, the Republic it's here. Only, it's only this 800 is an op words. It's, it's, so can it's, you it's, account it's, it's for one words. sentence in that piece? Can you just answer my question? And, if and, I had wrote an 800 word piece I, in which I said, why I'm are black answering, people no, so awful and morally deficient? No. What would you no, think of that? I, I, I would not I would not think you were a racist but I certainly do I would think that you are racially insensitive if you would take a piece and not look at the genesis of that piece and place it into historical and literary context and do people but who do are you watching the show and reading the piece with attacking do, people on the basis of their race which is so common on the left no don't you see yourself as part no, 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 no. of the problem as no, a no, driver no, but, of because, race hatred you don't see that no that's that's not what the piece does what what i find troubling yes it does is, do that. Uh, is, is is i understand many uh, white brothers and sisters may not even be aware of what they're doing but when people bring the situation to them uh -huh. and they respond in an indignant way, then that raises a question of morality that I think we no, have to wrestle I'm with. I'm trying to not, get a straight answer out of you. My next question is, how much do you make in your sign of over there at no. the University of wherever? But you won't answer that, I'm sure. I, 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 Look, you're I, I, not answering I'm my sure, question. I'm sure I don't make nearly you're as much as you evasive. with the race baiting that you do. <laughs> I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I would trade my salary you know for yours what? any day. I brother. would never say something like this about a racist. But you do people. every I would day. Be ashamed to say but you something do every, like that. You do it don't. every day, and but I you never do would. It a, right. You do you it in a more cursory there, right? way, yeah. which which doesn't really uh -huh. really help the discussion. You know, cursory? I mean, so uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I think we Thanks, need to, to. Good to see you.